connecting with people and something else. Something that's taking a bite out of the Big Apple. As dusk falls, rats emerge to take possession of the streets and feast on the trash we leave behind. But recent accounts suggest a bigger, tougher, and increasingly fearless super rat is on the loose. I would say a rat about this big, about this big easily. The pound is probably by four and a half to five pounds. It was very intimidating looking, very vicious. That was the mother of all mothers. The Norway, or brown rat, America's most common rodent species, is typically seven or eight inches long. The super rats are described as being nearly as large as a cat, 20 to 24 inches long from nose to tail, with a voracious appetite and a vicious temperament. I've seen throughout the years that I, I see bigger and bigger rats. After a decade's experience in the pest control business, Sam Soto believes the New York rats are growing. Oh, the rodent rock? The rodent rock? Like when I first started, the rats, to me, didn't appear to be that big. And now, you know, always saw the alpha rat, the big rat, the guy who was in charge, the dominant one. Uh, he was always pretty big. But now I look at s some situations when I go in and I see, you know, 10, 15 rats, and I see five or six of them that are big rats. Despite numerous sightings, the super rat is unknown to modern science. But prehistoric fossils indicate rodents did once grow to a monstrous size. Most of the extremes that uh, paleontologists are finding are, are back in the fossil record. Dale Kukainen, a rodent ecologist, was impressed by the size of these beasts. You had some huge animals uh, back in, in, in prehistoric times, big dragonflies, big salamanders. But the biggest rodent was recently discovered in, in Uruguay, and it was as big as a car. The remains were found in 2004 on the Rio de la Plata coast in the south of Uruguay. Paleontologists realized they had an extraordinary specimen on their hands. They reconstructed the rest of the skull and determined the animal's proportions. There are formulas for every animal, and for most rodents, the head constitutes about 19% of the body size. Using the standard ratio, the body length comes out at almost 10 feet. Its massive incisors would have been a powerful weapon, crucial for defense against saber-toothed cats and 10-foot-high terror birds. The Uruguay giant is long extinct, but over the past 100 years, reports of big rats are on the increase. Could the rat once again be developing into a bigger, more predatory creature? Monster Quest's three-part expedition will focus on the rat-infested alleyways and tunnels of New York City. Steve Duncan, an urban explorer, will probe beneath the city in abandoned tunnels. It's here that a huge hissing specimen was reported by a homeless man. His pathways will be Manhattan's underworld, layers built up throughout the city's history. Bruce Colvin and Dale Kokainen will look for evidence with night vision camera traps and a risky strategy that involves using rats themselves as cameramen. And we'll talk to experts and eyewitnesses, some of whom have seen something that gives them chills. like this size, 12 inch bloody tails, and uh, it's probably by four and a half to five pounds. Alberto Saldana, a maintenance man on the Upper West Side, first encountered a giant rat right outside his basement apartment. The first time when I saw a rat, all my head come up, you know, was like scared. You know, I said, no, forget it. I gotta be a strong than the rat. I gotta win the land what you have. Armed with only a hockey stick, Alberto lies in wait as they emerge at night to feed. Then you wait for them every day, 12 o'clock or 4 o'clock in the morning. They come out when they don't have noise and then you kill them. I live in the basement. I don't want a rat attack my kid. That's why I don't feel good to kill an animal, but I have to do it. They're going to kill me, so I got to kill them. That's the only way you survive in New York. 
If there are giant rats in New York, they have plenty of places to hide. The cool thing about this is that uh, we're really only about three blocks from Times Square. Steve Duncan has spent many hours exploring these hidden spots. Now he's heading deep underground, conducting his own search for the big rats in a train tunnel under the avenues of Midtown Manhattan. We're over underneath 10th Avenue and uh, 41st Street right now. So, you know, we're three blocks away from one of the busiest intersections in the entire world, and it's like, you know, it's a tomb down here. Absolutely no one. Deep into the tunnel, he finds signs of life. The residents, human ones, emerge from the shadows. Do you ever see rats down here? Oh, and many rats are here, a lot of rats, especially when I bring some food here. I can bring no food here around here in the food, because when I bring food here, it's so many rats come here from all over the place in the area, yeah. Many times when I, before, when I come in, the first days, because, you know, when, when I knew you in the living places like that, so when I bring some food here, a Chinese food here, you know that. Exactly the same day, if yes, yes, a few minutes ago, a big rat like that, jumping, boom, in the table here, man. Yeah, I scared, really. Man. Steve searches for another tunnel dweller, Jose. Hey, Jose! Jose, you around? Jose's been living down here uh, about a half dozen years, and yeah, he, uh, he he's one of those guys who just likes poking around, but he, he's told me a couple times about this, uh, this time when he was uh, up on one of the, one of the kind of cliff sides here that make up the side of the tunnel, and he found an opening and was kind of trying to peer in, and he heard a sound, some kind of growl or hiss or something that scared him so much he's never been back in the section of this tunnel again. So... I'm kind of curious to know what it actually was. Stories like Jose's do not convince this Manhattan exterminator. Jack Wyler believes New Yorkers simply like to exaggerate. New York thinks of itself as big in every, every way. And so if there's a rat problem in New York, it's got to be the biggest rat problem. And if there's a X number of rats in New York, it's got to be the most rats of anywhere. New Yorkers take great pride in everything, good and bad. You know, the most muggings, the mo mo most vicious criminals. We've we got to be number one in everything. But no one's ever caught a rat bigger than, I think 12 inches is the largest ever caught in the history of modern science. And the man who caught it was Dale Kukainen. I currently hold a record for the largest documented Norway rat, and it's in this book. And it says that the largest rat that was documented was a 1.63 pound Norway rat under exceptional conditions, very good diet, uh, lack of competition, low stress. Um, they might get bigger. But perhaps Dale's record is about to be broken. As I was arriving home one day, I parked my car and I was walking to my apartment. This picture was taken in October 2007 by George Smith in downtown San Francisco. I got very close to home and I stumbled on this thing that was lying on the road. When I looked at it closer, it ended up being this gigantic, disgusting, dead rat. And it was essentially about the size of my knapsack, so maybe two, two and a half feet. And uh, so I, I took my cell phone and uh, I took a photograph of it. Is George's picture proof that a Norway rat can grow into a giant? Well, this photo purports to show a rat that's two to two and a half feet long. Now, this looks like a Norway rat. He might be bloated from the sun. He might have been uh, run over and squashed. And the problem is there's really nothing in the photo to give it any scale. I wish people would just think to throw down a quarter or something to, to allow you to determine how big the object is in the picture. Sam Soto believes George might have found a big rat. It looks like it's bloated, possibly from having eaten poison. Uh, the dropping tells me that it's more than likely a Norway rat, but what size is it? Who knows? Could it be big? Yes, it could be a big rat. 
The modern American city is the perfect place for rats to thrive and survive, and perhaps evolve into monsters. In many respects, the Norway rat is better adapted to our cities than people themselves. Bruce Colvin is an expert on rat habitat and rodent control. And when I look at New York City, I look at extreme habitat for this animal. That means infrastructure, old infrastructure, congestion, lots of refuse placed out on sidewalks and plastic bags at night, great feeding habitat. This restaurant in Greenwich Village made the headlines in 2007 when rats were filmed running freely around the floor at night. I don't think I would eat here again. I don't think. Uh, the, the food is good, but at the same time, I wouldn't trust it. And nowhere is safe from rat infestation, even Manhattan's most upscale neighborhoods. The idea that rats are associated with low-income areas is a myth. Rats are associated with locations where there's food sources available. Going to be better fed, high-class restaurants, high-class garbage. Dale and Bruce have decades of rat experience between them, advising cities on rodent control and inventing techniques to deal with them. Now they have come to New York, willing to put accepted scientific wisdom to the test. Any rat that reaches a pound is exceptional. In our experience, now New York may be growing them bigger. That's what we'll have to see. They choose their target neighborhood carefully, taking into account population, food sources, and current infestations. Well, the reports that are coming in from the people who work in the area suggest lower Manhattan, which we, we already know has more rat complaints than other parts of, of some of the boroughs. There's some older areas here and some streets. Uh, the Ann Street, Fulton Street, and some of the alleys off those areas. Uh, it's an older neighborhood, and there have been reports of rats running around. So that's what we're going to try to focus on. So. Dale and Bruce will use infrared cameras to see down pitch black rat holes and survey darkened alleyways. They'll mount wireless cameras on wild rats, a world first, in an attempt to infiltrate a giant rat colony. The key to this technology is going to be finding something that is streamlined, something that's lightweight, that can go with the rat down into a borrowed system. Remember, this is a borrowing animal. First, they need to trap rats, live ones. This is not as easy as it sounds. The feel the rats and sizers bite into your finger. It's right to the bone and it, the pressure is incredible. Dale and Bruce head off to the hunting grounds of Lower Manhattan, where they may not have long to wait to find their monster. Back entry area going into that. There, hold it right there. Big rats have always been a part of society's collective fear. They scare even the most experienced exterminator they'll skeeve you out. I mean, they skeeve me out. <laughs> and I've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. Rats. What do they want from us? Rats. Why are they man's enemy? Rats. They're watching, waiting. Are the reports of giant rats influenced by an instinctive fear of the rodent? Human beings, I, I think, are, number one, there's a genetic kind of hard wiring about rats, the, the same way we have with certain kinds of insects. We're, we're wired to be afraid of them, of rodents. Rats figure in our horror movies, in our ghost stories. And finally, there are urban legends about giant rats, about rats that eat, uh, bite the toes and fingers of children as they sleep, rats sucking the breath out of babies, things like that. And we, we just perpetuate that fear. We have good reason to be afraid. Rats are indirectly responsible for the death of over 30 million people. In the Middle Ages, uh, the bubonic plague wiped out a third of humanity. It was initially felt that the plague was caused by rats, but in fact it was caused by the fleas that lived on the rats. So when you lose a third of your uh, human beings, you're going to remember that for a long time especially when some of our worst fears become real and the legends turn out to be true, as one family in Kansas City found out in 2007.
A baby girl is in hospital tonight with severe rat bites. All you can do right now is pray. I mean, she's seven weeks old. The attack is a gruesome reminder that we share our city with a rodent that is capable of squeezing through a hole the size of a quarter and chewing its way through pretty much anything. In a city of this size of New York, there are probably between two and 500 rat bites reported every year. And I think nationally between 10 and 15,000. And it often is children because the rats are out at night when the children are sleeping. They may be attracted to, to food crumbs. The rat will come up and start to feed on that, and he may actually bite. It has even been known for an entire pack of rats to attack en masse. In 1979, tugboat workers in New York City went on strike, preventing the barges from carting off the garbage from Manhattan Island. On Ann Street, just a few blocks from Wall Street and the World Trade Center, the rats were making the most of a rising tide of fresh trash. It was during this time that one local man witnessed an extraordinary midday attack. This woman in back of me when I turned around was screaming. Steve Jordan remembers that the rats seemed to be working together as a pack. I could see that there were about uh, five, six, seven rats uh, jumping on her, and only her, and crawling on her clothes. As soon as she started screaming, some men uh, rushed down, and they, they started hitting the rats off her with newspapers that were rolled up. And the rats retreated over this nine-foot wall uh, into the big pit. Uh, the police were called. They cordoned off the area. And for the next week or two, exterminators came in with billy clubs and rat poison, went in here. They would toss out sacks, uh, burlap sacks full of dead rat bodies. There's a run here, going right underneath this 30 tent. years later, the quest for a super rat brings Dale Korkainen and Bruce Colvin to the very same alleyway. You see how smooth it is compared to the rest of The remains of dead rats demonstrate the violent life of a New York colony. Could a big rat be the culprit? We can see an animal that's chewed into the back of this rat, and it was more than likely another rat. Getting a little extra protein for his evening meal. Looks like the... Uh, skeleton of a rat right there that other rats are trying to drag under that piece of plywood over there. A second alleyway just two blocks away looks even more promising. Look at this hole here. Oh yeah. No doubt rat activity there. Dumpsters open, dumpster lids open. There's some rat droppings right here. That's a nice run right there. Yeah, yeah. great edge habitat for rats to move through this area. Within about 35, 40 feet, they'll look at the piles of refuse. Right. Incredible. Great food source. And all that food's going to grow big rats. They need to trap some good-sized rats that can bear the weight of the wireless cameras. So I've got some chocolate and a piece of carrot. There you go. Put it well back here behind the treadle and set the trap. And the rat comes in door goes down. That's what we hope to find. Several traps are laid and baited. Specially coated tracking mats will capture the paw prints, and the size of the prints will show the size of the animal. Finally, infrared camera traps are used to survey the area. They'll take one picture a minute for the next 24 hours. As soon as the light fades, the rats come out to play. We just heard our first squealing rats establishing territory. Right. They're out and about. They're starting to move. People activity's dying down. The rat activity's coming up. We already picked up a footprint on the tracking tile. It's the first direct evidence that large rats are in the alleyway. This is a big rat. Oh, yeah. Footprint there. No other footprints. Okay, he was moving. He, he was really once. moving. 
As Bruce and Dale continue their quest, a train tunnel beneath the city is home to a man with some horrifying tales to tell. At nighttime, there's a lot of them. The a whole lot of them. New York City may be breeding a new kind of super rat. History shows they'll be extremely tough to eradicate. Rats are so resilient they can survive a nuclear blast, as Dale Kukainen witnessed firsthand. I was on one of the teams of the people that went back to the Marshall Islands after the atomic testing program. Was recorded on Element, a port of entry. In the 1950s, the American military exploded 67 nuclear bombs in and around these Pacific Islands, equivalent in power to 7,000 Hiroshimas. This is by no means a light weapon since it weighs 43,000 pounds. When we went in, we were on islands where all the soil had been vaporized, the trees had been vaporized, but the rats went underground. They went in the bunkers where the test equipment was and down in their burrows, and they did very well. They survived and a few insects survived. Everything else was basically vaporized. In more recent times, rats are proving their resilience by developing a resistance to modern rat poison. We found resistant rats in over 40 cities in the United States. And if that animal can survive and then breed, you might be left with only, you know, more super rats. Sam Soto, a New York City exterminator, has his work cut out for him. The worst I'd have to say it was, it was last year um, in Upper Manhattan. There had to be uh, more than 100 rats in uh, the basement. And the rats were just coming out of everywhere. It was, un it was really unbelievable. They, they're coming right up to you like, uh, you know, what are you doing in my house? <laughs> what are you doing in my room? Get out. Um, very bold, very bold. Now he's on the trail of some very unusual specimens that could give hints as to the future evolution okay. of the New York rat. There's a dropping all the way in the back there. So we know for a fact that they're back here somewhere. And it looks pretty fresh. He believes that he's found some kind of mutant or hybrid rat, and he wants to take them alive. Perfect. Well, we got a complaint of uh, rats in a basement, and uh, it was the first time I ever went into this building. And when I got into the basement, I saw uh, white rats, white and black rats, mixed in with the black rats, and I found it strange. I went upstairs as a pet shop on the ground level and find out that they, a year before, had rats for the snakes. They would feed the snakes these white rats. And somehow, they must have gotten loose. Well, if we can capture them, and then we'll know more. But Sam's pet store hybrids are proving difficult to trap. We did spot the white rat that was down there. Um, he's elusive. We didn't catch her, capture him yet. We're, we're still after that guy. And we're gonna go back in and set some more traps. Sam's search continues. While down beneath 10th Avenue, Steve Duncan tracks down Jose, a longtime tunnel resident whose stories are the stuff of nightmares. Jose, what, uh, you've been down here like a good five years. What, uh, what rats have you seen? These are huge, very huge. And at nighttime, they will come, you know, matter of fact, they walk all, they walk on you. Yeah, they sniff on you and all that. If you got your finger sticking out or your toe sticking out, they might take a bite out of that. They might take a bite out of that. That's why I get the 110 proof ammonia. They don't come around. And what was the biggest rat he ever saw? I think it was the mother of all mothers. It was like this long, but maybe that thick. And the tail was like that and about that thick. Had red eyes. And he actually stood up on that rail, on the, on the, tra on the track, and dared me to cross that. That's a big rat. That's something that you uh, probably capture and take it to the zoo. You were wandering around in that tunnel where Greg lives now? 
And uh, you found that, that cave or something on the side? I was looking around and all that like I normally do. And um, I climbed up the hill. And there was like a hole, like a door in the wall. Without the door, it was like a hole in the wall. So I, when I got up there, it was a growl. I'm talking about, it wasn't a human, it wasn't no dog. It was like very, it was like a growl, like a bear or something. Man, I took off down the hill and never went back there again, never. That was scary. As a matter of fact, I, think, I still feel that, I still feel it now. What is this giant beast that Jose describes? Is it a rat or some other animal? Using Jose's direction, Steve sets off to find the hole. Well, let's take a look this morning, see what we have. Yeah. Bruce and Dale return to the alleyways. They're hoping some big New York rats have wandered into the traps. Hey, the trap sprung. It sprung? Oh, we got one. We got one here. Let's see. Looks like a male. Like a male. Yep. About nine ounces. An average size adult. Looks healthy. Okay. Time-lapse pictures from the camera traps will reveal the night's rodent activity. At first, there's little to see. We know there's a hole in the back entry area going into that. There is Hold one. it right there. We have he's one going, right there. I bet he's going for that hole. There they are, right there. Yep. The people activity died down at approximately 11.10, and there we have two rats. 11.19, 59 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a big one. Look at those glowing eyes. In those pictures, we clearly saw uh, an alpha male. In terms of the size of the animal, I think we also probably saw some very large females. The rats appear to be 8 to 10 inches in body length. Rats spend most of their time in complex rat burrows, which extend several feet under the ground. Bruce and Dale use a specially designed infrared camera to see deep into the burrow system. The reception looks good. All set? All set. Just talk me through. All right. And if you see anything starting to run now, at me, let me know. Now, can you keep going forward? These rats could be anywhere within 10 feet of my arm, or right next to my arm. I'm going forward now. They know there are big rats down there. Can they infiltrate the colony? Hold it right there a minute. I think I see something. It's a good location for them. The Monster Quest expedition is on the trail of a new breed of New York super rat. Big, bold, and belligerent. Eyewitness accounts from the trenches of World War I suggest that rats can even develop a taste for human flesh. Soldiers reported huge rats that would devour corpses on the battlefield. I saw some rats running from under the dead men's greatcoats. Enormous rats, fat with human flesh. My heart pounded as we edged towards one of the bodies. His helmet had rolled off. The man displayed a grimacing face, stripped of flesh, the skull bare, the eyes devoured, and from the yawning mouth leapt a rat. Rats even attacked the wounded as well as the dead. The rats were huge. They were so big, they would eat a wounded man if he couldn't defend himself. The new front line is in the basements of New York City. Gino Rodriguez is a building manager in Manhattan. He has seen super rats clamber up into homes through a toilet, an urban myth that is all too real. A tenant called me 
and uh, she stated she had a rat in her toilet. Okay, I'll, I'll be up to take care of it. Not a problem, you know. I'm sure. I'm sure it must have fallen in. She says, "You need to come now. I'll, I'll take care of it. It's not a problem." She says, "No, you don't understand. There's a rat in my toilet." So I came by to her apartment. I'd opened up the lid, <laughs> and to my surprise, it was a giant rat. It was a huge rat. So it actually tried to jump out, but it, it hit like the, the underside of the inside of the bowl, and it just stood froze and looked at me. <laughs> I first tried to flush it back down the bowl, but it, it didn't go down. It, it wasn't going there. It just took a nice shower, and um, but I came back with a baseball bat and uh, pretty much whacked them. Gino's rat managed to climb an impressive 50 feet. It's a fifth floor walk-up building, and it pretty much went up to the drain line. And if you follow the pipe, the rat somehow just started, you know, making his way up and up the stack. Seating. Down in Lower Manhattan, Bruce and Dale are hoping to catch a glimpse of the rats down in their burrows using infrared cameras. These rats prove to be camera shy. Oh, well, oh, that's what's that right there? Oh, that's your, that's your arm. <laughs> but with several rats already trapped from the previous night, they head back to headquarters to analyze their catch. All right, what have we got? Here goes. And we got him. Okay, I'll try to get the body length. Out here. The body length, uh, minus the tail, is eight inches and five eighths. It's a full-size adult male rat, it is overall in generally good health. And giving, try to bite. And trying to bite now. 380 grams, yeah. minus the bag. I think what we have is a representative group, typical of any back alley in America. Are they big enough to attempt the next stage, attaching the rat cams and infiltrating the burrows of the super rat? Mounting the cameras on the rats will require some specialist help. Hi, John. John Chapin, a neuroscientist at the State University of New York, has experience that will prove crucial to the expedition. This one is much smaller. Well, we have, over several years, have discovered methods of putting cameras on rats, and not only cameras, uh, backpacks with radios and video uh, transmitters and that sort of thing. Uh, and we've found that it works quite well. Uh, the problem, of course, is that uh, those were lab rats, and here we're going to be using feral wild rats. They may or not be quite as sanguine about that, so we're going to see what we can do. The team decides the only way to attach the cameras without causing any discomfort is to anesthetize the rats. Well, what we found is that the rat does seem to be able to wear the harness. That's the good part. The bad part is that it's too loose and the camera is too heavy. So the rat is, is trying to lug this very heavy object around with it. Uh, in fact, it's falling off of the rat. They try again with a tighter harness and a smaller redesigned battery pack. You see he's breathing. Now he's, he's coming back. His breathing has just picked up dramatically. Here he comes. In downtown Manhattan, the team is ready to set the rat loose with an infrared camera attached. They are hoping it will show us the darkened rat underworld and perhaps a glimpse of a giant. It's breaking up right now. Chapin's team, Levon Krauss and Shao Zhu, test the wireless reception. They fence the rat in so it can recover without being attacked by other rats. Right. The battery pack for the camera is still too heavy, and the rat does not seem eager to move. They need to find another way. 
the team decides to feed the power down a long wire tether. Even if it was 10 feet, you know, it would be enough for us. That's a much, it's a much lighter camera. I think he's going to do better. The rat cam is finally let loose in the alleyway. <laughs> there he goes. There he comes. At last they get to see the world from the rat's point of view and a chance to meet a Manhattan monster. Meanwhile, down in the tunnel, Steve Duncan finds a rat hole fit for a giant. In prehistory, rodents evolved into 1,000-pound beasts the size of a car. Scientists say the Norway rat does not get bigger than a pound and a half. But is New York home to a new breed of outsized, aggressive monster rats? This man has found and killed rats weighing up to five pounds in an Upper West Side basement. This man, who makes his home in an underground train tunnel, regularly sees rats the size of cats. This man witnessed a vicious attack by a pack of rats just three blocks from Wall Street. As Bruce, Dale, and the Monster Quest team send off a Trojan rat, complete with rat cam, into a lower Manhattan alleyway, urban explorer Steve Duncan is searching for Jose's growling monster, possibly a large and aggressive rat-like creature. The caves and crevices under 10th Avenue make a perfect hiding spot. So what you have is just, you know, you have all these multiple layers where they tear down an old building and you have the foundation of the old building still left and they build something new on top of it. So that's how you get these like little multi-level nooks and crannies. They are prompt territory for giant scary rats because they are close to the surface and, you know, basically inaccessible space to humans. Keeps on going. There's kind of this crevice underneath the wall over here and I can see it opens up. Okay, so I think I'm underneath one of the older building foundations here right now. And uh, uh, to my right over here, the tunnel kind of gets narrower. It goes around to the, in, a, in a curve. It's too narrow for me to easily pass through. But I see it opens up again and there's a little pile of trash, kind of food containers and stuff. Looks like they've been hauled over there. And then right over here is about a six inch diameter hole that goes upwards and past the concrete, looking like a rat hole. So this may have been the hole that Jose was talking about. There are so many niches, it's really hard to tell. But uh, if so, there's no trace of the giant thing that he, uh, that he heard. But uh, there's definitely traces that something was here. So what was Jose's monster? Was it the giant rat or something else? Well, I, I think most likely it was probably a possum or a raccoon or something. I don't know. I've seen rats that, that are actually pretty bold and that are terrifying. So I don't know if it was a group of rats or a family of rats. I couldn't totally imagine, you know, uh, uh, a, a big old angry rat wanting to defend her brood and making some sort of terrifying sound. And not only that, but I can imagine that in a kind of confined space, a big rat would actually be a pretty tough enemy to, uh, <laughs> to try to deal with. Steve's search must come to an end. Jose's growling monster could still be out there. But what about Sam Soto's black and white hybrid? This mystery is about to be solved. He finally succeeds in trapping the rat. I've never seen a white and black rat. It's, it looks like a pinto, looks like a cow, like a miniature cow. <laughs> Dale and Bruce confirm Sam's diagnosis. It's a highly unusual hybrid of wild and domestic rat. It may look like, an, like a domesticated rat, and it, it has some pet rat heredity. But it clearly does not have the same adapted traits as a purebred wild rat. A wild rat, a fully wild rat by this moment, would have leaped off my hand. And with a little bit of work, this rat would tame down again. You could socialize him so that he could be handled perhaps without gloves. He seemed to 
to kind of welcome coming back into human society and, and, and leaving his own uh, a rat colony. So I'm going to take him home for a pet. <laughs> there he goes. There he comes. Back in lower Manhattan, the team sends the rat cam off into the alleyway, hoping to catch a glimpse of a giant. Uh, there he is, right there. You can see him right there on the pallet. But typical uh, rat behavior, hiding, blending in. I think the rat is on a tether, and so it's, he may have been caught up in but they didn't take into account the agility of wild rats. It eventually wriggles free of a harness. The rat got snagged on some garbage behind the dumpster and it managed to use that snag as leverage to sneak out of its uh, backpack. And uh, then we weren't able to recapture it. So it's hanging out somewhere under the dumpster right now. The team tries one more time. They send another rat with camera attached down into the rat hole beneath the city street. Ready with slack. We're not getting a good signal. And I can tell you why. Rad slipped the, the backpack. Here's the camera. <laughs> Goodbye, Rad. Goodbye. <laughs> it doesn't stay down there for long. Yeah, he's coming back up. It's coming back, back up, man. <laughs> Holy crap. The rat is seemingly chased back out by something. There he is. Is that a different rat? That's a different rat. Look at this. He's driving all the rats out. There's another rat. <laughs> As the rainstorm breaks, the team takes cover and reviews the footage from the rat cam. You, you, can, you can sort of see the... Uh, uh, like the wall uh, that the that the rat is walking down through, and and this is probably the area where we were wondering about where where the rat went. Even after close examination of the footage, there is no sign of a super rat. Perhaps they need to go deeper into the rat underworld. But uh, like there's it for example, uh, that's the habitat of the rat. This is the first time that rat cam on the back of a rat has been used. I don't think that it's very easy to put a camera on the back of a, of a rat and then have it go down into the bowels of the earth without uh, the camera falling off. So remote capability, streamlining, lightweight, that's the way it would uh, have to go in the future. But that was a good first try. Well, for me, you know, I see rats run from a distance. I see them in a trap where you can pick them up and look at them. For me, the thrill was getting some vision of a rat's world. We're going to try again. We're going to try to get the smaller, smaller cameras, but we'll figure out a way to do that. With inconclusive results, the search for the giant will continue. Jack Weiler is not convinced it will ever be found. You're never going to find a New York super rat because there isn't one. I don't think there's a secret rat enclave somewhere in New York that lets them out periodically to uh, scare New Yorkers. I think that the fact of the matter is is that we exaggerate because we're afraid. And, and that's why we see rats as big as small dogs. They're definitely out there. You know, you, you, if you stop uh, quite a few New Yorkers and ask them about them, they'll tell you that they've seen these, uh, these rats. <laughs> There's no other place like New York, and the rats know it. 